Welcome to starting lineup for week 29. I'm your host, Jason Seguini. Without Andrew Wiebe this week, he is on a beach in Costa Rica. At least I hope he's on a beach because the U.S. national team isn't even there yet. Andrew, enjoy your time away. I will do the heavy lifting for our fantasy friends this week. Want to remind everybody that the final stat corrections for this week are going to happen on Wednesday. You'll find out who you're playing in the Fantasy Cup ahead of Wednesday night's games. Of course, there are Wednesday night games. That means double fixture week, a big week for Seattle, Chivas, Columbus, and the Houston Dynamo. We'll have plenty on those teams later in the show. One more thing I wanted to remind you guys of. I know Portland is also a good-looking team this week. They don't play two games, but they do get Toronto FC at home. So some updates from them. Ben Zemanski, he's out. He was red-carded. But Will Johnson, likely back. He's training in full. He is likely to make a return in this game. You know he's been good to fantasy owners this year. Donovan Ricketts, he's out. Ryan Johnson, he's out. Alvis Powell, they are all out on international duty. But Rodney Wallace is not out. So I know a lot of people own him in fantasy. He has been very productive. He will be there for you this week with that home game against Toronto. Stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com or PortlandTimbers.com for updates on Diego Valeri. As of right now, he's 50-50. We'll see if he's ready to go by the weekend. I already traded him off my team. I think he's kind of dicey, so you can either stash him on your bench or I'd advise you to move on from him for this week. Final reminder, check out MLSsoccer.com. Under the News tab, you can get all the updates on injuries and, of course, disciplinary action. And then if you check out MLSsoccer.com slash fantasy, you can get Ben Jada's right up on the international call-ups. He will get you up to speed on who is out this week and who is still here and will be playing and can help your fantasy team as you head into week 29. All right, now let's get to the fan questions. The first question coming in from Josh Mondel. He says, should I pick up Jose Gonzalez or Diego Fagundes this weekend? I'm not sure if this is really an either or or question, but... I'll give you my take on both guys. The New England Revolution at home against the Montreal Impact. The Impact actually coming off two straight shutouts. Remember, one was that blowout win against the Houston Dynamo where Houston didn't really show up. The next one was against the Philadelphia Union, a team that is struggling for goals. Only five goals in their last seven games. So as good as Montreal's defense has been, I don't think they've really been tested this week. New England much better in the attack. And also Bernardello is out for Montreal Impact. Take a look at the at MLS Fantasy Twitter feed. You can see a picture of his ankle, and that says, I am not playing this weekend. So I think you're in good shape with Diego Fagundes. Him and Juan Agadello, great chemistry lately. I'd expect something to come out of that in this game at home. Also, Jose Gonzalez, always a good pick in MLS Fantasy. Very consistent. He's probably the safer bet here. If you want to go for the upside, though, Fagundes, not a bad choice. Next question coming in from Max Verrett. He says, is Lamar Nagel a good pick? And Max, in short, yes, he's a good pick. I think a lot of people are going to be picking him up this week. I think some people might even be captaining him. He started the last eight games, even with Dempsey and Johnson and Evans in there. With those guys all out, two with the national team, Evans, of course, out injured now. He's going to be playing. And the key thing here is he might actually be playing forward. For me, that's where he's going to be a bigger fantasy value. If he's playing in the midfield, he's averaging about three points a game. That's nothing special in fantasy. But when he plays closer to goal, which he could be doing here with Obafemi Martins, who's coming back from injury, I think he can be a lot more dangerous. You look at what he's done against Chivas USA this year in two games. He has a goal and an assist, and one of those games they got a shutout. So that's plenty of points from the midfield position for Lamar Nagel. He has a double fixture week this week. Chivas USA in the first game, Chicago in the second. They are both home games. You can go with Lamar Nagel this week and feel safe. One thing to keep in mind though, and I mentioned this last week, if Eric Zavaleta comes in and plays forward this week, that pushes Lamar Nagel back to the outside midfield role, it might lower his value just a little bit. So maybe that means he's on your team, but he's not your captain. Good pick in fantasy. You should put him on your team either way. Stay tuned though for what Ziggy Schmidt does with the lineup. Next question coming in from Adam and he says, which is the better bargain captain choice, Lamar Nagel, who we just spoke about, or Eric El Cubo Torres? 
I'm actually going with a similar choice here. And the other guy I'd throw in the mix here is goalkeeper Michael Spurning for the Seattle Sounders. I like their schedule, two home games. They have Chivas and Chicago at home. I think he could be getting at least one, if not two shutouts there as far as Spurning goes. On the other end, I told you that I kind of like Lamar Nagel, but here's what Torres has on him right now. I think he's got a tiny edge because you know he's going to play 180 minutes. Nagel will probably also play 180 minutes, but he might be playing some of them in the midfield role. So I think Torres now getting on the same page with his Chivas teammates. We've seen them getting him more dangerous balls, getting him into better spots. They could take advantage of that second game against D.C. And look, Torres has two goals in his last two games. Even if he doesn't score against the Sounders in Seattle, remember, D.C. United traveling all the way to the West Coast against Chivas USA. That could be, as my friend Andrew Wiebe would say, a point bonanza. So keep in mind, I think it's very close between those two. I might give the edge right now, though, to Eric Torres. Also, other guys you might want to look at. Brad Davis, probably a guy who's going to be captained by a lot of people. And then I mentioned Spurning, but also maybe Tally Hall in goal for the Houston Dynamo, another guy who could pick up some points this week. Some follow-up questions coming in from Adam, and he asks, will Henri start this week? Here's the thing. I thought he was going to start last week despite that little spat. But I will say this, I do expect him to start this week, but I don't like the start. I said it on last week's show, I don't like New York on the road, at Houston especially. New York has been shut out in four of its last six road games. That said, Houston has not been that solid in defense. They don't have a shutout at all in their last seven games. But like I just mentioned, Tally Hall could be a good start. They could get a shutout or two this week, and it could be at the expense of the New York Red Bulls. So keep that in mind when starting Thierry Henry. I will give you this note. I actually am starting Thierry Henry this week on my fantasy team. I'm just not advising you guys to do the same. Final question coming in from Adam. He had a, uh, a flurry of questions this week. Best team to go after for double game week players. And that is easy for me. It's the Seattle Sounders. Once you figure out who's playing, they are the sure bet. The other teams have a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that could go wrong. Uh, Columbus, we've seen everything go wrong for them lately. Remember, Iguain also suspended for the first game this week. So I think you stick with Seattle as your double game fixture team this week if you're only looking at one of them. Next question coming in from Johnny. He said, who would you guys prefer at forward? Eric Torres or Will Bruin? I told you Torres, a slight edge over Nagel. I give him the same slight edge over Bruin. I actually have both of these guys in my lineup along with Thierry Henry. So obviously I don't think any of them are a terrible choice. Um, I do like Torres again because that game against DC. Bruin has two goals in his last five games. We've seen him struggle through this season, but both of those goals came at home. One of those goals came against Columbus. So this week he's away to Columbus, a team that could be struggling, could score there, and then at home against New York. Hamas and Olave coming back for New York, that's a bonus for them. But again, I don't think it's a sure bet that New York is going to be able to shut out Houston. I think Will Bruin could do some damage in that game. I think he gets at least one goal this week. The other way to look at this Will Bruin thing, though, is that with the two games, maybe does Dominic Kinnear try to shake things up and say, you know what? Will Bruin hasn't been on fire. Let me see if I can get someone else hot. That's the one thing I would worry about with Will Bruin. And again, that takes him just a little bit lower than El Cubo Torres in my book. Next question coming in says, who should replace Robbie Keane in my lineup? Other than the two start guys that we talked about, because in MLS Fantasy, we've seen it before. You want to have two chances at it. You want a guy who has two starts. I would say either Agudelo or Fagundes, if you want to open up some uh, cap space to help your team elsewhere. I think those guys could do well against Montreal at home. And then the other one is whoever starts at center forward for the Portland Timbers, probably going to be El Trencito Valencia because we've seen Piquillon injured. You might want to follow that story this week. If Piquillon comes back, somehow gets onto the field regularly, you might want that starter against Toronto FC traveling all the way to Portland. Uh, that could be a good start for you. Final question coming in from the at MLS Muppet. He says, I still have my wild card. When should I use it? I'll tell you when to use it. Around week 35, there are a lot of buys that week. So either before it or after it to make sure you get the most points. Remember, fans, 
When the wild card round, the first round of the playoffs happens, you get unlimited transfers for that. So you get to reset your squad. Essentially, you get a free wild card for that round of the playoffs. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to wrap up the show. I'm exhausted. Without Weeby here, I'm carrying the load. Hopefully, I'm helping your fantasy team. Don't forget, check the website Wednesday night. You'll find out who you're playing in the Fantasy Cup if you qualified. I hope you all did. That's all we have for the starting lineup this week. We'll return next week. I'll be in Columbus for U.S.-Mexico, so I guess you'll be getting starting lineup at least half of it from there. I'm not sure where my buddy Andrew Weeby will be at that point. We don't even know if he's coming back from Costa Rica, for all I know. That's all I have for this week. Enjoy the weekend, guys, and good luck, of course, to your fantasy teams.